The chase for Jefferson Davis and the death pageant for Abraham Lincoln are among the great American journeys, like the explorations of Lewis and Clark, the settling of the West, the building of the Transcontinental Railroad, and the landing on the moon, the rise and fall of the two Civil War presidents, each a martyr to his cause, altered our history and added to our myths. The history is well known, 620,000 dead, the overthrow of old ways of life, and the end of a great but flawed antebellum empire built upon slavery. When Lincoln and Davis fell from power, they also set in motion two myths, the legend of America's emancipating secular saint and the legend of the lost cause. The assassination, nationwide mourning, and funeral train for Lincoln. The chase, imprisonment, and long Civil War afterlife of Davis. They haunt American history down to the latest generation. When I began the book, I thought that Abraham Lincoln and Jefferson Davis couldn't be more different from each other. And I was surprised to learn how much they had in common. They grew up in Kentucky, 100 miles apart. They moved a lot in their youth, and they suffered incredible early losses in their lives. Abraham Lincoln was certainly in love with Anne Rutledge in the pioneer village of New Salem, and she died an untimely death, and Abraham Lincoln was devastated, and it changed him. When Jefferson Davis was a young man, he was married for 12 weeks, and his bride died of malaria in his arms, and he went into what he called his great seclusion and essentially disappeared from life for the next several years. Those early tragedies seared Jefferson Davis and Abraham Lincoln, and they believed that life was a source of pain, of regret, of danger, and it marked the way they conducted their lives until their deaths. Jefferson Davis is one of the lost men of American history. I knew much more about Abraham Lincoln than Davis, and I learned a great deal in researching the book. Davis was considered one of the great men in 19th century America. He had attended West Point, he had been a hero in the Mexican War, he was a congressman, a senator, one of the greatest secretaries of war in American history. He opposed secession. He was not a rabid person who wanted to destroy the Union. With great reluctance, he joined the South as it seceded. The Davis story is as fascinating as the Abraham Lincoln story. And that lost story of who Davis was, what he contributed to America, how he participated in the effort to ultimately destroy America is one of the most fascinating things I learned about while working on this book. Spring of 1865 was the most remarkable season in American history. It was a time to mourn the Civil War's 620,000 dead and to bind up the nation's wounds. It was a time to lay down arms, to tally plantations in cities that had been laid to waste, and to plant new crops. It was a time to ponder events that had come to pass and to look forward to those yet to be. It was the time of the hunt for Jefferson Davis and of the funeral pageant for Abraham Lincoln, each a martyr to his cause. And it was a time in America, wrote Walt Whitman, when lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed.